Dang, that ditty was good. Good evening, folks. This is Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Sunday, December 16th, 11 p.m. Mountain Time, 2018. Current GFS model showing a white Christmas for half of the U.S. Ho, ho, ho. We'll get to it. Stormy Monday p.m. through your Tuesday. Flooding, travel disruptions, mudslides, avalanche danger, strong winds, heavy rains, even occasional raid in Redding. Snow near Boise. We'll get to it. Lot to cover. Keep calm. It's boom time. Rip current statement. High rip current risk remains in effect. Storm train keeps rolling through northwestern U.S. with rain, snow, and wind. We got demonetized for playing this video last night, so we'll stay away from it. Rain, wind, mountain snow, and rough surf will lash the northwest and California through Sunday night. Which is now. As the barrage of Pacific storms continue, we've seen this picture. Holy schmicture! Stormy through Sunday night, localized flooding, debris flows, and burn scars. Dangerous sneaker waves and avalanche risk continue. We got pictures. Straight from the source. Straight from the source's mouth. Yes, we're working on it. It's not cooperating. And that's a boom. Take a look at that. Oh, boom. Take a look at the picture. Port Angeles, Washington, power. There was some power in the winds. That's a road. It literally looks like a shredder came down here. Holy macaroni. Let's blow this up. It's worth it. We can't even open picture a new tab. We'll click on it. Boom. Look at it. Holy shit. Look at that's like a snap telephone pole. Let's get a close up. Thank you, Vera Limey Phillips, for sharing this picture of amazingness. This is what Port Angeles, Washington looks like. Clearly, there's a home up here. These trees look shredded. Power lines, telephone poles. Oh, my goodness. You are here. Increased cosmic rays, waning magnetosphere, atmospheric compression, <laughs> winds like it's you've never seen before. In North Carolina. And this guy Broken needs record. to be shut down. <laughs> Let's get to this guy. Come on. For real? We're doing a video. So, solar minimum 24 is going to last for at least the next year. Till this time in 2020, my prediction is that in about 14, 16 months, we may come out of this cycle. But 14, 16 months is another year, and we haven't even gotten into winter this year. So, that's just a heads up warning. Here are the cold hard facts. This is for North Carolina. They made it through the first snow of the year. Now that the roads have been cleared, power is restored, and things are back to normal, we're about to look at the cold, hard facts. These were not shared with you in the mainstream ever. <clears throat> now, 34 inches of snow was received in Busick, North Carolina, the most in the state, 34. No one reported on more than 24 inches. They claim 2.3 million gallons of brine solution were used on the roads. This is frack wastewater. It qualifies as brine solution according to the industry. They're allowed to spray frack wastewater on the streets. In fact, in North Carolina, they sprayed 2.3 million gallons of it as well as 43,000 tons of salt, which would make up the volume and weight of the USS North Carolina battleship. Now, six inches is the average number of snow North Carolina receives every year. And 34 inches fell in Busick before winter. 9.1 average is the number of inches that Greensboro received in this single storm in the fall. And six inches is the average number of snow North Carolina receives every year. Ow! 
Can you do math? That's ridiculous. We're already three inches above the yearly average and it's not even winter. You fraud. Get in your hole. Now we covered over 450,000 power outages, but the real number is 656,000 just in North Carolina, which means probably almost a million people were without power. Do you have a backup? Frosty is not happy. But we predicted this. And those are the cold hard facts. Snow showers, squalls to accompany fresh wave of cold air in northeast. That looks like frost. Frosty. Cold air diving to the northeast United States to start the week will be accompanied by gusty wind, snow, and the threat for slippery travel, especially through your New England. As the Mid-Atlantic dries out, the storm will spread snow and wintry mix from northeast PA to Maine on Sunday night, AccuWeather senior meteorologist Christina Patnowski said. The greatest risk of steady accumulating snowfall might be across central and eastern Maine from late Sunday into Monday night. Three to six inches of snow will be locally higher amounts can fall from Augusta to Bangor, Holton, and Caribou, Maine. Enough snow can also fall in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, and Portland, Maine to lead to slippery Monday morning commutes and many nightmares. Maine will not be the only area of the Northeast contending with snow at the start of the week. Expect colder and blustery conditions over much of the Northeast on Monday with bands of lake effect snow likely off of Lake Erie and Lake Ontario. The snow showers could quickly coat grassy and elevated surfaces as well as lead to slippery patches along parts of Interstate 80, 81, 86, and 90 and less traveled secondary roads. Ho, ho, ho. Toronto, you're in the crosshairs for the whitest winter ever. Ever. You remember the winters of 40s and the 50s and the 60s? Yes, they're returning to a moist area in Canada where you live. Locally heavy snow squalls may occur, which can lead to rapid reductions in visibility and heightened risk of chain reaction accidents on highways. Outside Maine, the greatest risk of a couple inches of snow to accumulate in triple east Travel will be over central and upstate New York where snow showers will be most persistent. So upstate New York, we're talking about 80% coverage down through the Finger Lakes, Binghamton, the central Appalachians in western PA, maybe even the tippy touch of the West Virginia. Yes. It's not out of the question that stray flurries reach the I-95 corridor from New York City to Boston. The reason we say this is because it's unpredictable. But we're pretty predictable when we do the predictions. That's a cold shot through the Northeast. Not the beast from the East, but we'll get to that. We have connectivity issues and it's slow. Ho, ho, ho. Let's check it out. Snow, rain, and wind in late week storm to impact holiday travel. She wore her best pink shirt to tell us all about it. Weekly wrap up of viral videos of Matthew Weathers, Brittany Boyer. Much of the southern U.S. was buried in snow last week by a winter storm. Here are some of the best videos from that storm. In Texas, this police car skidded on a snowy highway. And this one needed to get some manpower like, to get out. Oh my God. And in North Carolina, many cars were either stranded or abandoned. Some even got into horrific accidents. At least someone enjoyed the snow, or in this case, this bulldog in North Carolina. It sure looks like he's ready for some serious snow shredding. Make us proud, boy. <laughs> Who let the dogs One, two, out? Three, this is really bad. It is currently raining, sweating, and snowing. Well, what do we have here? Are we looking at two future meteorologists in the works? They're giving us an update on the winter storm that hit South Carolina. Why don't we listen in some more and see what these girls have to say? <laughs> Now, this is something you don't 
don't see every day. A white albino deer was spotted in Mansfield, Ohio. Talk about an early tree for the holiday season if you ever find one. These guys are very rare. And I hope you get a chance to see the Geminid meteor shower. It peaked on the night of December 13th and 14th, dazzling the northern hemisphere with up to 120 meteors per hour. This particular meteor was spotted all over Mexico. You can see it fly over Acapulco, Mexico City, and even the Popocatapeto volcano. That's it for this week's wrap up. Don't forget to check back next week for AccuWeb. Oh my God. I'm Brittany Boy. Talk about forecaster light. We just got a sample. As students embark on winter break, last minute shoppers head to the stores. Holiday travel ramps up, and the, it's about to hit the fan. River flooding this week, mostly minor to moderate flooding in Florence hit areas in the southeast. James River, Tar River, the Noose, the PD, the Lumber, the Savannah, the Shawnee. Hee hee. <clears throat> Look out! Earlier this week, Wilmington, North Carolina reached 100 inches of rainfall so far this year. And we'll see even more rain with this system as the heaviest once again looks across the fall across the coastal areas in the days to come. Northeast cities where previous annual rainfall records have long been exceeded are on track to receive even more wet weather. Already 8 feet in some areas of North Carolina. These are records being broken well past 1900. We're going back into the Dalton minimum before your very lives. This has nothing to do with global warming. It has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with CO2. It has everything to do with the waning magnetosphere, the sun shutting down, cosmic ray increase, atmospheric compression, which results in increased flooding. Heads up. Anyone living or traveling through the areas from the Carolinas through the Mid-Atlantic, New York, and New England should prepare for multi-day stretch of gusty winds and heavy rains. And this is all during the final moments of your shopping mayhem. Now, yesterday we talked about the nonsense coming out from the mainstream saying that in by 2050, global temperatures are going to rise 4 degrees, and by 2100, they'll be up 9 degrees, and there'll be no snowpack in the Sierras ever. And millions of people are going to die because they'll have no water to drink. Sierra snowpack stands at more than double last year's total, which ended the drought in many regions. Violent snowstorms in the Sierra from late November to early December have boosted statewide snowpack to more than double normal levels for this time of year, according to California Department of Water Resources. I don't know why the mainstream sources didn't check with the California Department of Water Resources before they posted their lies. But I can... I can probably guess... Because they were paid to publish it. As November 2018 came to a close, the Sierra Nevada saw its first significant snowfall of the season. Further snow is forecast for Tahoe, according to the National Weather Service, Reno, which will further add to the snowpack. Three more fronts, in fact, will add to the Sierra snowpack before your very lives. And this is all before winter. Inbound Glen Highway down to one lane due to collisions and heavy snow. The inbound Glen Highway on the Muldoon Road exit has been partially closed due to multiple car accidents amid heavy snowfall, the Anchorage Police Department said Saturday, Sunday afternoon. Drive with extra caution and please slow down. And this is because Alaska has been missing out on snow. Say it ain't snow. But <coughs> that trend is over. Friday snowfall was the second biggest on record for December 14th in Alaska, and there's more to come. He's stoked. He's one of millions of men that don't have any women at all up there. Mark Road shovels snow from the driveway at his Middletown home Wednesday ahead of Friday's big snow dump. Weather forecasters are seeing another big snowstorm bring over Anchorage on Monday on the heels of Friday's historic burst of snow that blanketed the city with feather-light fluff. The 7.0-inch dump recorded by the National Weather Service 
at the West Anchorage Station on Friday. That's the second largest amount for December 14th ever, according to records dating back six decades. 2013, 8.5 inches of fell as well. Snowfall were the heaviest on the west side of town without the seven inches falling. Three inches draped the hillside in Eagle River. Whew. Say it ain't snow. Record snow in Alaska. Of all places, ice-free corridor getting record snow as we descend into the grand solar minimum. White Christmas 2018 forecast. What are your chances of seeing snow on the ground? Well, go outside and look. Christmas is 10 days away. If you have snow, it might be there. A white Christmas is on the wish list for many people. Here is the chance for a white Christmas in general. There is not a lot of territory outside the Mountain West, Northern New England, and far Northern Tier where the odds of Christmas are greater than 50%. This is gen in general for the last three decades. Last year, the whole country was covered in snow because of global warming. And here's the National Snow Analysis Map. As of now, should we do depth? Snowpack? There it is. Here's the data. So we are already seeing average snowfall across the country for the last 30 years and this is currently so we have 10 more days as we approach winter to break records and records we will break let's look at the total snowfall it's already normal or above normal in many places snowpack is heavy throughout Alberta British Columbia Eastern Canada New England Ontario and most of the Rocky Mountain front is at or above averages before we even get into winter. Look at the purples. This is the data from this morning. Not even, it's 12 hours old. More snow has fallen. <coughs> More snow is predicted. Take a look all the way down into Mexico. Same latitude as Miami. Snow's coming by Tuesday. Let's walk it through for you. Back it up. So we're going to see heavy snow develop throughout most of New York State. 5 to 10 inches expected north of Catskill region. Heads up, Connecticut, Vermont, New Hampshire in the south. That's where the heaviest snow will fall in the next 24 hours. Not a good commute up in New England. To say the least. We're going to hear some <laughs> information there. Central PA, you're going to get some snow. And then the snow will develop on Monday through the Sierras, through Nevada, and the entire Rocky Mountain front. All the way down to southern Arizona and southern New Mexico with some spotty showers. Western Utah and northern and western Idaho are going to get the brunt of this. With record snows forecast to continue through Christmas and then after Christmas we have a new year's storm which is going to bring add insult to injury in the Ontario region that claims they never get snow <laughs> heads up Montreal you're gonna get a white Christmas mark my words on the 25th major snowstorm will move across the upper Midwest making children smile My prediction is 23 of 50 states will have snow a day before or a day after Christmas. We're talking falling from the sky. Idaho is going to break records. Western Montana. Western Washington is going to break all-time records before we even get to winter. There are hundreds of in 10 feet of more snow predicted. If this area gets into the 20-foot range of snowpack, we're talking unprecedented territory. And all the scientists that are writing papers that this snow is never going to be seen again have to feel like the most embarrassed idiots on the planet. They simply wrote that because they were funded to write it. 
They manipulated the data and they said, yeah, if the temperatures rise nine degrees, this snow won't be here. But they refused to look at the global satellite data since 2016, which shows on every source that the globe has been cooling. Science is a joke. Academia is a joke. It's run by industry. Corporatocracy much? Series of storms to impact the West Coast. Powerful Pacific storms will keep conditions wet and windy. Winter storm watches and warnings throughout New England. Heavy fog advisories through most of Arkansas and Mississippi, extending down into northern Louisiana. Winter storm watches and warnings throughout the Sierras. And coastal gale warnings in Washington State and Oregon. No duh. Trees have been shredded in that region. It's only going to get worse as we enter winter. Snow icy mix to produce slick travel and threaten travelers from France to Germany into Saturday. Holiday shopping plans and festivities can be disrupted as a period of snow or icy mix is anticipated to cause slick travel from northern France to Germany into your Sunday. A band of snow or icy mix will sweep eastward across the northern mainland Europe through Sunday. The risk of slick conditions will spread to Hamburg and Munich and Germany. Du was ein kleiner Schneiderwutzen. The winter weather may occur for only a few hours in any one location, but that can be enough to create hell in Frankfurt, Hanover, Hamburg, Brussels, München. Untreated sidewalks and roads can be slick, especially for Al, who's a prick. And maybe he'll fall and break his stick. That was quick. Heads up. White screen everywhere. Let's load some pages. We got 47 more pages to talk about. And not enough. Whew. Let's get to it. Snow, freezing rain from Storm Deedra. Yeah. Deirdre causes disruptions across the UK. Storm Deidre calls travel hazards, power outages, and disruptions this weekend across the United Kingdom. Winds of gust at 110 kilometers per hour at Pembury Strands in southern Wales. Leeds and Bradford endured an extended period of freezing rain from the midday to the afternoon hours of Saturday. Here's the same picture we showed you yesterday. Apparently there's no other pictures. Crazy. Shandon Bell's tower was closed due to the orange warning. And there's your numbers. There's your exclamation point. Heads up. Status. Orange. Well, at least you'll get your vitamin C, won't you? Wind warning for Ireland. And that's boom. Let's do this. Okay, where's my boom? There it is. Superstorm trail of devastation. More than 55,000 homes wake up without power in Sydney as Queensland braces for zombie cyclone to reform after half a meter of rainfall overnight. Take a look at the lightning bolt. That's positive. It even lit up the Ferris wheel. Holy macaroni. More than 55,000 properties in Sydney and the central coast remain without power after thunderstorm savage. New South Wales coast. Torrential rain, damaging winds and hailstones. Sunglasses and spectacles. Lash Sydney in the Hunter region on Saturday afternoon, bringing down trees and taking out hundreds of power lines. Fears of tropical zombie Cyclone Owen reforming off the Queensland coast are still a concern after winds up to 200 millimeters of torrential rain swept across the states far north. Totally fluxed. This has everything to do with increased cosmic rays, weather patterns that have never seen before, torrential downpours that are unprecedented again and again and again and again and again. And it will only get worse over the next 12 months to levels we have never, ever imagined. The SES said they received more than 4,600 calls 
mainly for fallen trees and roof damage. The bomb is a total fraud, issued a severe thunderstorm warning for most of the New South Wales coast on well, Saturday afternoon after vicious wind gusts in 100 kilometers per hour slam northern parts of the state at 2 p.m. and they were caught with their panties in a bunch. Heads up, bomb! How those panties feel? Pick them out. Seismic update. No quicks to note, we have broken the six mag barrier and there are explosions happening on the west coast. Let's check it out. 6.1 Indonesia after we have Saputan erupting yesterday as well as Popo erupting. Ambren, Sakodajima just moments ago. We'll get to it. Cosmic ray flux has led to five outbursts of volcanoes worldwide. Correlation is not causation, but our predictions are proving true because our correlations are creating predictions. Oh my God, it's amazing. 3.1 explosion, Battle Mountain, Nevada. Apparently they're trying to get to the gold, as I was told. There was also a major quake in the New Madrid region today at 3.3. We're going to keep a close eye on it. There is no warning being issued for New Madrid. So stay calm. Popo, Volcano News and Eruption. Strong explosion last night. Lit up the thermals. Another very strong explosion similar to the one we showed you live. Video footage a week ago occurred last night. Volcanian type eruption. Huge lava output. The same time Saputan was erupting after the major cosmic ray increase, followed by Ambrin, and now today Sakodejima and others. We're not making it up. This is the largest Ambrin eruption in almost half a year. Currently four out of five on the status. Could be an orange or red alert coming out of there. That's a huge plume. Ongoing intermittent eruption currently. Let's get more data here on the volcanoes. Let's go live over and you can see Sakodajima erupting currently. It's been erupting for over five hours now. Top left. Torialba. There's some moderate uptick in Tordialba, but no outbursts. Etna's invisible, and Popo is quiet. But clearly you can see the outgassing at Saku. Come check it out over at Volcano YT. We don't have it on high resolution, and for good measure. Let's click on some of these tabs. I apologize for the slowness of the connection. Jesus. And that's a boom. Worldwide Volcano News. Let's go to it. Saputan erupting again. Dukono, Vianomov, Ambrin, Sakodajima, Sabankaya, Ebiko, Manam. Oh my goodness. So we've had this major cosmic ray increase over the last 36 to 48 hours and all the planet's volcanoes are blowing up. But it's there's no connection. Manam, high level eruption. No connection. Fuego, Popo, Saputan, Tucono, Reventador, Sakonajima, Ambrin, Vianomov. Are you kidding me? Former fossil fuel lobbyist to head interior department as Zinke exits. You want to talk about draining the swamp? How about draining the swamp and filling it with swamp monsters? Biggest farce ever perpetrated in history. The election of Trump. Draining the swamp. The biggest lobbyists in world history have been replaced with our government. Our government is a 100% corporatocracy of the biggest demonic scumbags ever conceived from a woman's womb. This guy clearly looks like Satan. 
and he's the least qualified pers person to head the interior department unless you want to destroy earth in eight years that's your guy how many cheesesteaks does he eat an hour? Definitely not as much as Chris Christie. Politicians are all scumbags. Hungarians rally against slave laws. Do you see what's going on worldwide? This is Europe. 10,000 people have rallied in Hungary's capital, Budapest, which used to be a cool place in the 90s, to go smoke pot and go skiing. Now that cost you 18 grand. The crowds marched towards Parliament and the state TV headquarters in what was the fourth and largest protest since the laws were passed. The slave laws. And it's only going to get worse. The unrest is happening globally. The Ebola is spreading now. Prices are spiking now. Cosmic rays are at a new modern maximum. Volcanoes, they be exploding. I feel like I am talking in circles. Let's talk cool shit. 4,400 year old tomb of royal Egyptian priest has been unearthed. After they took out all the pertinent information and erased the history, this is what they're going to reveal to us, and it is still amazing. Look at those six packs. Thousands of years ago, Saqqara, where the latest tomb was found, and which is home to the celebrated Step Pyramid, which has nothing to do with the Great Pyramids, because they are not tombs, and they were built over 15,000 years ago. But the Step Pyramid was a cemetery for Memphis, in the capital of the Old Kingdom, a necropolis, in fact. In modern times, as archaeologists started to bring the city's dead back to light, it became a tourist attraction, and these people are so incompetent that tombs of this magnitude are still being unearthed. If I took some ground-penetrating radar, I could find all of the missing tombs in about a month. But these chumps already know that that's not what they're there for. They are there to hide the information of our ancient past and then to write it down in lies and then publish it in books and to stick with the narrative. Do not believe a word that these idiots are telling you because it's all lies. These busts are clearly not Egyptian people. They're not Middle Eastern people. Look at the size of this guy's nose. He looks like a big fat white dude. And if you know about the genetics in Egypt, 99.9% .9 of Egyptians are not related to those who built Egypt or the pharaohs or the mummies. Over 80% of the people in Britain have the same genetics as the mummies. So clearly English white people were the Egyptians, the Brits. They certainly are their descendants. And this is based on science. But not a single person in school is going to be taught that the UK are the descendants of the Egyptian pharaohs. Have you even heard that? Please Google it. Check out what I'm saying because what I'm saying is true. And what they're saying in this article is mostly bullshit because they've already plastered over things that they already know they want, don't want you to see. It's all misinformation. If you're just coming to the channel, if you're just waking up, it's very difficult, and I know, because everything you have ever been taught, and this is coming from a graduate scientist, everything you have ever been taught, for the most part, is a lie written by the winners of the battle that destroyed the information that's being held from you. This gives the elites power over you so you can continue the slave race that they need you to be. Now go to work. Get to bed. I know you all have to get to bed now because you have to get up for work on Monday.
Monday Fun Day, where we pretend we care about our jobs. So sad. What's not sad Hello, is everybody. the crazy, crazy Canuck. Coming at you again from Saskatchewan, Canada. Today's you don't know about him? Let's hear his voice. Hello, everybody. This is Crazy Canuck coming at you again from Saskatchewan, Canada. The Crazy Canuck's been in Saskatchewan, Canada for most of his life. He's a farmer. He knows about bricks. He knows about growing crops in extreme conditions. And he also knows about biodiesel. The facts that you will learn on this channel are indispensable in the future that's going to unfold before your very lives. And he only has 400 subscribers. So that's how many people in Saskatchewan are going to make it with Brent and others. And they're basically going to take all the stuff that you ever work for because you're going to be dead in your house. Do you know how much stuff we're going to scavenge a few years after the event? All of your things that you thought were important, we're going to break apart and make practical items that we can use to survive and thrive. It's going to be great. Brett and I can't wait. If you want to join us, learn about biodiesel basics, where you can take some used cooking oil and make diesel gas. Yeah, he uses milk jugs and he does it in the basement. If you don't believe me, Come over and check out his channel and subscribe. If you've been trying to buy stuff through our <coughs> Amazon preparedness store and you're from Canada, no fear. The Grand Solar Minimum's Crazy Canuck has stuff for you to buy in Canada that's important, like sodium hydroxide so that you can make biodiesel, measuring cups so you know how to measure the right amount, and Anita Bailey's cold times so you know how to start preparing. So if you're in Canada and you want some products, check out the links under the Grand Solar Minimum's Crazy Canucks videos because he's selling greenhouses and other important things you might need up in Canada to start prepping. And you'll support the community. So please subscribe to his channel, watch this video, and learn something. Learn something. That's why we're here. We're teaching you what to do. Discovery is becoming more and more ridiculous with its fake documentaries. This is the Discovery Channel. <clears throat> it's not just them. How about the 93% uh, consensus of fake scientists that are pushing global warming agenda? How about them? It's all fake. And unfortunately, Dr. David Schiffman one of the leading shark experts, apparently, is also a leading dogmatist and a jackass. He had the balls to post this on Twitter a week ago. If you find that your adamantly uninformed personal opinion disagrees with expert consensus on a technical topic, please consider that all the experts know something I don't. It's more likely explanation than I alone solve the complex problem experts have long been studying. Well, Dr. Schiffman, what about all the shills for the last three decades that have been receiving funding to prove something that's not true? Do you even know that was happening? Because you're part of the problem. You've been receiving government money to prove global warming is killing sharks, which is a fucking lie. You know how I know? Sharks are one of the longest lived animals on the planet. I'm a paleo climatologist. I'm also, yes. I'm an invertebrate paleontologist, so I know about the biome. I know about the entire geologic record and all life on Earth. And the fraud of evolution, according to Darwin, total fraud. And I know the slight reworking of evolution by Niles Eldridge in the late 80s, punctuated equilibria. I was part of all of that. I help prove punctuated equilibria is a fact. There is no evolution. There are merely boundaries upon which, on the other side, everything is new. There is no such thing as a transitional species.
You're a fraud because you believe in transitional species. Not only that, Mr. Schiffman, you're not even a doctor because you also believe that you know everything about sharks. And the words that you bloviate are so embarrassingly unscientific that you should not even consider yourself a scientist. And I'm gonna, about to tear you apart and show you how pathetic you actually are. And we're going to use this based on all the things you've said and all the science that exists that you will not acknowledge because you're not a scientist. You're a dogmatist and you simply follow with the flock that's called the crowd. Yeah, I, don't, I know you don't know about it, but the crowd mentality, the mob mentality is where you're at. The fraud, deception, and lies. How Discovery Shark Week became the greatest show on earth because he's claiming that they're fraudulently... They're spewing lies over the Discovery Channel. And you know what? Mr. Schiffman spoke to 500 students last year all over the country. And every group of students asked him if Megalodon was still alive because the Discovery Channel posited that Megalodon may still be alive in our oceans. But Dr. David Schiffman knows that Megalodon could not be alive, ever. It's impossible because Mr. Schiffman has searched the entire ocean for all of the shark species. The only problem that this D-bag has not addressed is that we only know less than 14% of the species on our planet, which means through extrapolation and science, statistics alone, that we only know 14% of the shark species on the planet. And this guy has the balls to tell you and I that, we, that he knows everything about sharks and that there's no megalodons in the ocean because David Schiffman said it. What a fraud. What a fraud. 85% of all shark species are un- yeah, unknown, undiscovered. And this fraud's going to tell you that they don't exist. When 85% of the species that he's unaware of, according to him, don't exist because he's a scientist. No, he's a dogmatist and a fraud. And he's an egomaniac and he can suck it. You know why sharks matter? Not because of any of your work, you D-bag. <laughs> there he is. D-bag of the year. Look at him. What has he got on there? He has on the D-bag outfit. Please come over to his Twitter and tell him what you think. I'm not authorized to see his status. You know why? Because I do not, I would never, ever follow this fraud who is overfunded by the money funders, the MFers, so that he can tell you the lies and tell everyone else that they're idiots. We're going to continue to rip him a new a-hole here. Now, he actually has his name on this paper, which is relatively new, 2015. Fishtails, Combating Fake Science in Popular Media. David Schiffman. Your name's on this, David. And he highlights that misinformation shared via popular media can influence public perception and science. Yeah, that's the whole global warming lie. Scientists can play an important role in correcting the spread of misinformation. That's why I started the channel. And that's why I just stuck my foot in your ass. Because you're a fraud. Scientists should be aware and prepare for common misinformation in their field. Like you, Mr. Schiffman, who is a fraud. And you wrote a paper on frauds? And this is the most oxymoronic and ironic paper I have ever found. David Schiffman is trying to fix science while he is the problem. Technical experts can partner with experienced communicators to boost their message. Yeah, the IPCC can fund the entire fraud narrative so you get paid and you get your 401k swells and you can buy those stupid fucking sweatsuits and look like the biggest jackass ever. Hey, Schiffman. You've officially sucked it on our page. Please tell him he can suck it because I'm not done with him. We're about to show Schiffman some facts. Hey, Schiffman, do you know we have only discovered 14% of all species on Earth? Yet you claim that Megalodon does not exist in our oceans. So 
So do you know about the other 86% or something? Are you just holding out or are you a fraud? In fact, there are more than 500 species of sharks swimming in the world's oceans and Schiffman only knows about 400 of them. I guarantee it. And the funny thing is that there are 3,900 other species that he has never seen but he claims do not exist. Which doesn't, which makes him a, a fraud and not a scientist because he does not acknowledge the 85% of the species that he is unaware of, which science knows about. Except this guy, University of Miami. Apparently he sits on the beach too much and gets paid too much by the IPCC, the NSA, and all the other frauds run by corporatists to tell you you're an idiot. And how dare you? claim that you know more than that guy who's an expert. Schiffman's an expert at nothing. He, I guarantee he doesn't know about CMIP6, the waning sun, the waning magnetosphere, or climate science because he's a fraud. He doesn't have time because they fund him to prove global warming. He doesn't have to look at any data because if he did, the data would not support his evidence. If people actually looked at all the data going back hundreds of years, all the proxy data past 400,000 years, the last 1.5 million years of all the ice records that we've been boring from Antarctica and Greenland for the last 30 years, they would have not a leg to stand on. But they disregard the information. They disregard the facts that 85% of all species are undiscovered and they continue to tell you that they know everything. Are you picking up the fraud? You're watching a play. You're watching the third act because it's about to be the denouement. I know I'm speaking French and that's fancy for the facts. But the denouement is the end. The end of the game coming soon. Those that are prepared will make it. <clears throat> and there are many underprivileged people on this world. Over 50% of the population is living in poverty. Even if you think you're lower middle class, yeah, you're poor. And I just took a trip out to one of the poorest places in the country, Secret Valley, Monument Valley, where the feds almost shot us to death. But we have boots on the ground there. And we have lawyers that are suing the federal government to give back the money to the, that the people deserve in that region. We are going to every lengths to remedy the situation. We didn't create that situation. We, we just got involved in it. And now we're going to stick our foot right in its ass. Not only are we suing the federal government to get the people in that valley their money that they deserve and the respect because it's their land. But we had someone canvass the entire Monument Valley National Park and all the children that live there. And we have a list of things that the children in that valley want for Christmas. <clears throat> and these are children that don't have any money. Their families have never made any money. They're living <coughs> on just a few hundred dollars a year, if that. And I'm going to be up all night making their list. <coughs> and we're, <coughs> we're going to put it in the store. And we'll have it available tomorrow, the Navajo Children's Wish List. And when we get the list and I make this section in the store... We're going to have an address in Monument Park to send it to these kids. So if you've never helped another human, now's your chance. Facts are in. Frauds are frauds. <clears throat> I'm getting choked up, man. What else is new? We love each and every one of you. Times are changing. 
Life is hard. You can live, you can survive and thrive in the changing times, but you need to start to unplug from the system. Like I said, get off of your pharmaceuticals, learn to live off the land, learn about wild edibles, learn how to fish and hunt. Learn how to can. Learn how to grow food. There is not much time left. Be safe.